from Bar. Ben. Um, when we first opened Sugar, our lineups were just Roxy style, just god awful. You know, two hour waits, and that's that's just unheard of in Victorian. People weren't used to it, and we started seeing the lineup shrink and shrink and shrink because people wouldn't come because they were afraid of standing up in line, standing in line. So what we did, we did uh, on our marquee outside the building, we just put reservations, call our number. Sure. And then what I started doing on Friday and Saturday is taking my cell phone and walking around the malls downtown when somebody would see me, Dale from Sharon, they come over and say hi. And yeah, I don't like coming there anymore. I don't like standing in line. Well, you know what? I'm going to put you on the guest list right now. And just <laughs> grab your phone and it's done. <laughs> you know, even if one of the boys don't answer, you get the voicemail and you put it there. And they feel like, oh my God. Right. And it worked. Away we went again. Excellent. And now you have a two-hour lineup again. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a bad thing. They're getting used to it. Fruit as a, as a company uh, that specializes in promotions. Do you want to tell us? It's extreme party promotional products. And basically, uh, I just started it up. And uh, the way I've been getting customers is giving them. It's a funny thing right now is uh, glow sticks seem to be one of the hottest things on the market, especially those ones you put in your mouth. So I, I go around and give people an actual glow stick. I don't care. It's like 30 cents for me. And to them, retail, it's a couple bucks. So I give them my card and the glow stick and I get phone calls galore from that. And uh, well, we also do like t-shirts and hats and all that other sort of stuff. And, but uh, it's the glow sticks that pulls everyone in because it's, I guess, a perception thing, and yeah. it's yeah. great. I want to make a comment yeah. on that. That's sort of a, of a, a new gimmicky kind of thing, and fine, right? Um, there's a lot of stuff going on out there in the world. Uh, there's a couple companies. One uh, is called uh, um, uh, Promo, the Promo Network. Uh, Larry Moore uh, is actually a good friend of mine, known him for years, and um, exceptional company. These guys go around, mostly North America, and they find out about all the cool things that are going on. Uh, he gives seminars. Uh, he has a newsletter to keep you up on, on what's sort of new and happening in the industry. Um, check out the end of the tape, and, and there'll be a, an ad for it. Um, or check our website for these kind of things. So we got links to a lot of things that are, that are neat. A lot of good companies are doing things. What we're trying to do is spread ideas. Again, there's no real right or wrong way to do things. It's what's going to work for you. Everybody's got their own style. So start to think about new ways or new places to go out and, and do that. Uh, another one is Patrick Henry promotions great great company uh, and, and they do things really well and they get involved in bigger promotions so they'll they'll be on the end of the video as well if you want to check that out um, but you know get involved with, with the companies and the people that you know have some new ideas right or maybe just an idea that you know that, that someone else is doing in another area right it's a big world we don't have to reinvent the wheel right Jerry uh, charities are great I know that the Roxy and Grandma Entertainment often does the 24-hour relay yeah stuff like that um, Bar attended a couple nights just for Big Brothers and stuff like that. Cool. It's great events, you know. Yeah. You just put a little bit of your time in, and you get it. You get the return. Exactly. Makes you feel good too. Yeah, totally. Yeah. You know, take care. Also, uh, liquor reps sometimes will give up, you know, free booze at the beginning of, you know, between seven to nine. They can have like a scotch tasting or a wine tasting. Sometimes it's tough to get the liquor reps to do that, but right. you know, they, yeah. they're out there. Right. One other thing I like to mention is that. Um, Get together as your staff. Do maybe a pub crawl night, you know, when you're slow. Um, it's a really good idea to be able to get your entire group together. Again, wear all your, your club's, you know, logos and hit three or four or five different bars. Get, you know, get a bus, make sure there's nobody drinking and driving. Maybe even invite your customers. You know, I think that's a great way to make them feel great. All of a sudden, you descend upon a bar, right? And all of a sudden, wow, you make them your best friends, right? And you can invite them back to your bar, right? And you go on to the next bar. Right? I mean, it can make a huge impact, you know, it's fun, everybody has a good time. Do you have We used to do that, we'd call it the liver train, and it was, the a, train. <laughs> it was the scheduled shift, and everyone was working that Wednesday, because it was the slowest night, and we'd go to a bunch of bars that we would know people came to us, do you know what I mean? And so, we would, we would return the favor, yeah. share the wealth, whatever, right. we would literally descend on them with 15, 20 of our staff, um, the bar would kick in a bunch of cash for it to make the first few rounds at each bar type of deal And then we just pick everyone up and by the end of it, you know, we'd have 40 50 people and we'd all just walk back and it's not a huge expense on the bar It, it is an expense But at the end of it when at 11 o'clock or 12 o'clock for any I bring 50 60 people down for the last two hours of the night right. and Everyone's in party train mode yeah. Oh, we're partying with the Roxy, you know, and it, like for us or could have been Fred's or it could have been sugar, sugar it could have been exactly.
Exactly. We, uh, the four owners of uh, Sugar, we, we have a, every Wednesday night at uh, 6 o'clock, we all meet up um, and just go over business, basically. You know, it's okay, let's open up a bottle of wine and stop for a minute. And uh, so we, each Wednesday, we frequent a different restaurant. Mm -hmm. Same idea. Yep. And uh, they see, and I mean, when you see the four, four of us together, because we're pretty successful in the city right now, and hopefully it lasts for a while. You know, it's like generates quite a bit of energy, and it just right. pituates the restaurant. And guess what? That Friday or Saturday, you can guarantee they're all there. Yeah, and then they're, they'll keep coming back and keep coming back. Good. Yeah. All right, one major point before we, uh, we wrap up. Um, promo tabs. You know, do you have the ability to buy a customer a drink? Now, this is somewhat controversial. Some places really believe in this. Some people say, absolutely, I'm not going to do it. Um, there's pros and cons. Um, on the one hand, keep in mind that not, it's, it's not legal everywhere. Right? Is it a good idea? Is it a good way to make a customer feel great? Yes. Absolutely. Right? Can you overdo it? Absolutely. Right? People can abuse this. But my idea with this is that the bar sets the rules. Right? This is your limit. These are how many drinks. This is the, the time and the place and the kinds of people that I want you buying drinks for. Right? Don't abuse it. If you abuse it, it's gone. Right? can be a very powerful tool. And I spend my own money you know, on a regular basis buying people drinks you know, because I want you to feel special. Right? So there are different ways of looking at this, but I mean, it's not the only way, but it's very powerful. You know? Hey, thank you very much for coming. To thank a, a regular customer for being there once in a while, or to give somebody new. Hey, you know, how, you know, have you ever been to the club tonight? No. Well, you know what? This one's on me. Oh, great. Thank you. I forgot about that. Um, there's a, uh, a little yellow card, and it said, yeah. <laughs> And to be clear, they're not mine. I actually got these off of uh, Larry Moore oh, really? uh, for the promo. He, he uh, actually, well, there's some other company brought to him, but I got it for him. It's a little yellow card, and it's got a little cut opening, and you can sort of move that over, and you can put it on the edge of a glass, and it says, uh, gone to pee, leave my drink alone. Yeah, don't touch my drink. Right. <laughs> That's so cool. People, like, they walk out, and they go, oh, I got this cool thing at this bar. Right, it's all sorts of little tiny things like that. That's why I really recommend looking at these kind of uh, promo companies. They got books and, and, and newsletters, and all sorts of cool ideas. Right, so those are great. Um, but the pro, you know, promo tabs, it can be a very powerful way to make a good customer and thank them. Don't abuse it. Right? And check if it's legal because it's not everywhere. Right? Do you have a wrap-up point? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I do, actually. Um, <laughs> the best promote your business, I think, that uh, being social is your business. And most often, sociable people are most successful in, in the business. And uh, your business is, to, it's fun, it's not work, to provide a comfortable, relaxing place for others to unwind. That, to a sociable person, is a fun place. And that really rubs off on everybody else around them and creates a good aura, yeah. which attracts people, you know. Talk positively about your club. Be positive. Meet people. Invite them down to your club. You know, think of this as your business. This is not a job. This is not a time punching, you know, look at my watch, how much time do I have left thing. All right? You can do as, as well as you want. It's totally up to you. All right? I love that. Right? Any other comments, questions, observations? Yeah. It's also the more fun you have, the more fun your customer has, oh, and yeah. the more people they go out and exactly. tell that they had fun. Exactly. You know, create some fun. All right. It's all about the love, baby. It's all about the love. Spread some love. <laughs> Spread the love. Thank you very much. Thanks very much for coming, guys. Uh, this next question isn't really a question, it's, it's your time to say anything at all you would want to say if, if, if this was your last shift or whatever and you wanted to say one thing to make a difference to people in the industry, what would it be? Uh, I, think the, I think everyone in this industry should promote weirdness. I think the weird, the funny, the uh, sometimes obscene is funny to, to some people and, and making an event of going out and I think people uh, want that when they go out I think they go out in groups or by themselves not to start a party but to be a part of a party and uh, I think that's the club's job or the bartender's job or the waitress's job in particular to to make it fun and that's how you'll get them back I've received, received uh, outstanding service at, a, at uh, the Keg Mansion in Toronto I really enjoyed uh, that place, and the waiter that I, I received this uh, exceptional service was a magician as well. So he would come up, take your order, 
and then go get your drink order and your appies or whatever quickly. And then in between that period, he'd do magical tricks for you. And that was really entertaining to me, especially when I'm sitting down to a meal and I have there's waiting periods and everything. There's sometimes nulls in the conversations or whatever. If the if the waiter can be entertaining, a magic show, perfect example. And uh, that's that's probably the most exceptional service I've received. Um, I have received a lot of outstanding service, um, but one thing that happened to me just recently, actually, um, I called a place and I was looking for somebody and we all, and it was lunchtime, so I knew they were busy, I knew I was being a hassle, but I really needed to know if that person was there. And the person on the phone was so wonderful to me, like they actually, they didn't sound irritated at all by the fact that I was asking. He went and he checked and I believe that he checked, he came back, he said, you know what, I went through, I didn't find anybody by that description and you know, what I'll do is I'll talk to the hostess, I'll give a description to that person, what's your name, um, he totally went above and beyond and I called at a time where it's hard to go above and beyond and especially on the phone, I wasn't even there and it, he did not have to do that and that was really that so stood out in my mind and I went there and I thought I'm gonna buy that guy a drink because he so didn't have to do that and it was really awesome I definitely something that stands out in my mind I'm a super host man when I have a party at home I wanted to be able to project that at, in an establishment basically and uh, I've had that opportunity it's really paying off totally 100 <laughs> percent yeah I think don't bite the hand that feeds you don't steal from the place you work for. Don't piss people off. Yeah. And I mean, we learned that lesson all on our own from the first time we took change out of our parents' wallet and got caught. I mean, it's something you learn. To feel like you're part of something as opposed to just being an employee of something. Because really, unless you're part of something, the people will stop coming. And then you don't have a job. So you're an employee of nothing. Outstanding service can sometimes be from people who don't even, you know, if you get technical, it's not perfect service or it's, you know, something may not be right but people will go out of their way to fix it or are very sincere about the fact that they care about fixing or making things right for you. Um, someone, you know, if a drink is mixed up, something, I've always taken the utmost care to make that person walk away from me with a smile on their face and be darn sure that they're going to come back again. And it's such an, it's an easy thing to do to, to fix a situation. But, I mean, I, I've been in a lot of situations where it hasn't been fixed and where all it takes is a bit of acknowledgement. And if someone would have acknowledged the situation, it would have been great. But yeah, it's it's the eye to eye contact and caring. It's totally increased my income, uh, my awareness of customer service, what it means to be a professional, to excel in what you do, to make and take the time to make the effort to go that extra length, whatever it is, a smile, a thank you. You know, a little funny dance. They say that um, a good writer, you can tell a good writer by the fact that uh, he, he likes people. It, and I would tell you, if you're going to get into this industry, don't do it unless you genu genuinely like people. Because otherwise, you know, I've seen uh, a lot of people get into this industry and, and, and fade out really fast because they, they're fake and, and they just don't last. So unless you like really have a drive to, to be of service to someone, because that's what the industry is about, don't even bother. Well, again, as a bartender, I mean, you see a lot of strange things over your duration uh, of tender behind a bar. But um, one that really stands out to me that was kind of unique um, was one summer we were doing a promotion where I was giving out T-shirts uh, off my bar, just um, real cheap free T-shirts, just with our logo and our phone number for a good time call, and I had our number. And I was giving these out the course of the summer, and the bar that I was working uh, had a lot of tourists. And uh, a couple months later in the fall, I get a call um, on my bar at about 9, 10 o'clock at night, and it was these uh, two guys from Germany that didn't know each other, ran into each other on a street in some small town in Germany with the two t-shirts on and looked at each other and started talking about the stories of being in Vancouver and being at the planet, the planet when Michael was the bartender because they'd both met me, and they phoned me. It was 6, 7 in the morning, and they were wasted, and they called me at my bar to say that they had met and ran into each other, and uh, I thought that was kind of a unique, strange story that I take to my grave. Uh, one night I was at uh, a restaurant in Vancouver here, and uh, our waiter uh, approached our table, and he, was pr he had a, his own uh, personality, uh, which was involved in our service of our table, and uh, 
he was able to ask uh, key questions. He knew his questions to ask in order for to uh, give us give us a service that we needed and uh, we wanted, and it was incredible because he used his own personality. Most of the time, it's because the, the all the guys interested in his uh, the tip that he's going to get or that he's actually a, a bartender that thinks he's usually an actor or something else. But uh, one time in particular, we were in. Uh, we were in Vegas, and um, me and my friend were uh, in the bar, and we were partying pretty hard. And uh, the guy that was doing some kind of huge promotion in there came up to us and, and said, you guys look like you're having fun and whatnot. Let's uh, step it up a notch. And he goes, oh, go up to the bar, and any shooter you want for, uh, for a dollar, and go crazy. So me and my buddy uh, stood up, went over to the bar, and I said, uh, I'll have uh, 10 buka baileys. And uh, the bartender looked at us. I guess we didn't have the right look. And he said, well, you can't have that. It's just one booze. Well, we told the guy that, you know, we weren't even really interested, but we thought we'd party harder. So that's what we would like. And he goes, well, you're not getting this. So I said, fine. I'll have five shots of baileys and five shots of sambuca. And uh, he looked at me, we paid the dollar a shot, I drank one of the shots of uh, Bailey's and then ended up making my own Buka Bailey's in front of him. My buddy thought that was hilarious. We, uh, we gave him a, a little bit of a tip and he looked at us and was pissed off and just walked away from us. Other bartender comes up, we ordered the same thing after the promotion guy had talked to this guy gave us the Buka Baileys, we threw him an extra 20, he was as happy as could be, served us great all night, and uh, everything worked out, but the first guy was a bit of a dickhead. <laughs> that pretty much wraps it up. I hope you enjoyed the video as much as we enjoyed making it. Be sure to check out our website, we've got lots of new stuff going up all the time. And if you like what we do, tell your friends about us, we'd really appreciate it. Also, make sure you check out the ads at the end of the video. These are some great companies and they can really help you if you give them a chance. So call them and find out for yourself. I'd like to leave you with three of my favorite quotes and a few thoughts. Abraham Lincoln said, I don't think much about a man who doesn't know more tomorrow than he did today. Michael Jordan said, I can accept failure. Everybody fails sometimes, but I can't accept not trying. And Wayne Gretzky said, I miss 100% of the shots that I don't take. So bottom line, care enough about what you do to think about how to do it better and be proactive go out there and make something happen in your life but above all enjoy your life because you never know how long you've got who wants to play golf Smart now brings you a sensational six-week program. You'll learn everything you need to know about serving drinks with style. <laughs> with step-by-step -step and slow motion instruction, you'll learn easily, quickly and properly, so you won't spool the profits or break everything in sight.
This is a business, and great bartenders do more than just take orders. So create excitement and increase your sales revenue with the Extreme Bartending Video Training Series. Our three videos with over 240 moves in all is a must for bartenders everywhere. No matter what level of bartender you are now, if you follow our program, you'll increase your odds for success because you'll make an impact on every customer you ever serve. Think about it. If you don't entertain your customers, someone else will. Because in this highly competitive industry, you can't just expect high sales and big tips. You've got to earn them. So you can have a lot of fun with it. You can make more money for your bar, make more money for yourself. And if you do it properly, it's a win-win-win situation for everybody. gives a little spark to people's lives. I think the world's starving for entertainment. Cocktail the movie. That was great. It was a really good beginning. But, uh, that was 1988. Hopefully by now we've taken it further. Look out! Georgian